Good evening. My name is Anthony Cunningham, and I want to thank you for tuning in to WTJR um, and, with, and spending your evening with me um, on Transforming Times in Christ, um, where we believe that you know the work of God in your life, the work of the Holy Spirit, um, there's going to be fruit that comes forth out of, out of your life. It's going to transform and change you. That's what Jesus promises us in 2 Corinthians 5.17. He says, those that come to Christ Jesus become a new creation. That These old things, your old lifestyle, uh, the way you used to live, your old mindset, all these things that are part of your past and part of the fallen nature, um, they, they, they no longer can come with you into this new place where God is calling you. It may take time for some of those things to fall off as you pursue relationship with Jesus, but His promise is a new life. Uh, uh, you're like a new creation, and those old things no longer hinder you um, in, in your walk in this life. So, um, I want to let you know uh, tonight as, as you tuned in, and, and again, I want to thank you um, for the hunger that, that is inside of you, um, for you know, staying tuned in to WTJR and, and what they offer. Um, we know the Word of God and, and great preaching and, and great ministry um, comes through uh, WTJR. And that's why you're tuned in, is because you're hungry to, to know Him more and, and to you know, have your spirit fed so that you can grow in the things of God. Um, tonight I want us to um, get our mind at a place where we can look and see what it is that, that might um, hinder what it is that God wants to do in our life. Um, I'm so thankful for the grace of God and, and you know, how His love is so, so great that He loved us while we were yet sinners. Before we were born again, His love was just there. And it, it, it's so strong that He's able to love us and prov provide a way for us to be born again. But, but uh, tonight I want us to look at, at um, unforgiveness. Because um, if we know it or not, and if, uh, and if unforgiveness is dwelling um, in our life and in our mind, um, it, it's such a major hindrance to what God wants to do. Um, it, it, he started showing me that it's, it's like a dam um, that, that stops the river of God, of, of flowing through your life and, and all that He wants to not only do in you, but also through your life. And, and I want us to understand that it is so important to for forgiveness to have its way in our life not that I have to fight this fight out of my flesh and out of my um, intellect and in and, and my willpower because uh, forgiveness can only really have its way through a relationship with Jesus and knowing God and, and knowing him more and more so often when we find uh, struggles in, in our life, we will look at really focusing on not doing something. But I want to encourage you today to, if we focus on knowing God and, and, and having a relationship with Him through His Word and through prayer, it's amazing how He will lead us out of those places of bondage. And unforgiveness is one of those major places that, that can come in and, and cause us to be somebody that we know we really don't want to be and that we're not called to be. I want to take a look at a, a scripture in, in the Old Testament in the book of Jeremiah in chapter 17, um, uh, 5 through 10. And I just want to read this to you. It says, Thus says the Lord, that cursed is the man who trusts in mankind and makes flesh his strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. For he will be like a bush in the desert and will not see when prosperity comes but will live in stormy waste in the wilderness, a land of salt without inhabitant. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose trust is in the Lord. For he will be like a tree that is planted by the water, that extends its roots by a stream, and will not fear when the heat comes. But its leaves will be green, and it will not be anxious in a year of drought nor cease to yield fruit. And then it goes on in verse 9 and it says, The heart is more deceitful than all else, and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? 
I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind. What an amazing portion of scripture that we see how we're instructed to put our trust in Jesus. And, and what it means by putting our trust in the Lord means putting our trust in His Word, putting our trust in the leading of the Holy Spirit, and not depending on even my very own intelligence or my own willpower to lead me into this place uh, where we call. Also, when we deal with other people, uh, so many times when people do something to us, it can cause us to act in a way that, that we know we shouldn't be acting there. And it actually damages us more than what it does the other person. When, when really our heart, the deceitfulness of our heart might seek out to repay somebody or make them pay for what they did. Or, or, or my flesh may want to be justified by seeing somebody else pay. Well, this, this is not the heart of the Lord. Uh, um, but to forgive and to release, to pray for those who might use you or, or uh, do things against you, to, to begin to pray for those people. But, but what we find in here is, is when we put our trust in, in the flesh, in the fallen nature. You know, if, if we're putting our trust in people that, that are not born again, that are living according to the fallen nature still, which means they're living according to uh, the flesh, the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and, and looking for those things to be fulfilled. And we know that that is a destructive path, and, and whatever comes in that path is going to have some form of destruction to come on it. Even as a Christian, a, a follower of Jesus in your own, in your own life, we can uh, still uh, allow these things to come in and hinder what it is that God wants to do. Because ultimately, God wants to be a testimony in your life of who He is. And forgiveness by releasing those that come and do things to you, or that might not be walking in the way that you want them to, um, is going to be part of that testimony. How, how we can stay a person that has a foundation of love and led by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God, by spending time with Him, there's a life that's going to result out of it. It's a life that, that I'm no longer easily offended because I'm not putting my trust in a fallen nature. I know myself before I was born again, the fallen nature looked terrible. It, it, it was so easy to deceive people, to, to do things to get this flesh to feel good for a season. But, but it, ultimately, I couldn't even trust myself in that state. And that's what I want us to understand here tonight, is that if we're putting our trust in the fallen nature, failure is there, letdown is there. We've got to understand and, and allow the Lord to create a perspective in us. Not that it makes it okay what, what others are doing, but what they're doing can affect who I am. Uh, I can't allow somebody else to come in and cause me to act in a certain way that, that I know isn't pleasing to the Lord. Ultimately, the foundation of who you and I are today as followers in Jesus Christ, people of this word, totally depends on our relationship with Jesus, our, our knowing God, knowing His heart. If it, it was Jesus who, who uh, at the time when he, when he hung on the cross and He looked down into a midst of people, who were just trying to fulfill what they thought needed to be fulfilled at that time by putting Him on that cross, by, by seeing what Jesus brought and, and had to offer to the people. It didn't line up with exactly what their expectations were because those were carnal, fleshly expectations that they had set up. And when Jesus didn't fulfill them in that way that, that they thought He should fulfill them by coming and and overpowering Rome or, or whatever was, uh, had them in bondage. It was those very same people that Jesus looked down on and knew that they were in a place of the fallen nature, in a place of walking in sin. And the words that came out of His mouth were, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. There, there are people that are living in the fallen nature. There, there are people that need to be born again, like you and I. And you and I are this example of what it means to be born again. 
Real quick in Psalms 118.8, it says, It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. That taking this refuge in the Lord is allowing this word to come in and, and create a, the, the way that I think. To, to get rid of these old ways of thinking that I grew up in and, and, and what this flesh wants to speak out and say to my mind and, and allow me to go in a direction which le leads to destruction. But allow this word to come in. If His word says pray for those who who might use you or, or hurt you or, or talk vain things against you. And instead of letting what's said by other people come in and create depression in you or, or create a, a, a way where you don't feel worthy, allow this Word to speak to you. Allow this, her, this Word of God to be planted. I want you to know tonight that Jesus Himself thought that you and I were worth dying for. He looked at us and thought you are worth it. You are worth going to the cross and, and giving up my life for. And that is our value system in the, sight of, of, in, in the sight of God. That He looks at each and every one of us as valuable people, valuable children. And that's what, that's what I want you to know tonight. To not put your trust in the fallen nature. But there is a new creature that you are born into. And this new creature that, that you are growing up in and maturing in will be a testimony to those that are in that place. They're going to see what you want. And they're going to ask you. And there's your opportunity to share Jesus with them. To share the Word of God with them. And, and I, I want to encourage you today. If there's unforgiveness that's in your heart, no matter how much you feel like you need to be justified, I ask that you go into prayer with it. That you, you allow the Word of God to speak to it and not walk in that way that seems right. I know it does, doesn't make what other people do right, but ultimately Jesus wants to be a testimony in your very own life and He's building a testimony and He's wanting to set us free. And, and unforgiveness is a dam that stops the river of what it is that God wants to flow in your life and through your life. And forgiveness is a major part of it. And it's a very foundation of what Jesus did and who God is. And He wants to be forgiveness in your life. And again, I ask you to go to that in prayer and let it speak to you. Thank you.